Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array. Editing is great, but it usually takes time. Sometimes it takes a lot of time. So today I want to show you five ways that you can save time and work more efficiently inside of Premiere Pro. So let's not waste any time here and let's get started. Number one, shuttle buttons, J, K, and L. We'll start out with a personal favorite of mine. A lot of times in the editing process, you're just gonna be sitting and watching clips, going through an interview to find the best sections, or maybe playing back your video before exporting to make sure there aren't any glaring errors. Long story short, as an editor, you know that a lot of your time is spent viewing footage, even if you're not technically editing in that moment. So why not save some time by viewing your footage at double speed? Whether you're in the source monitor, program monitor, or timeline, hitting the L key will play your clip, and then hitting it again will play it at double speed. And hitting it more times will result in even faster speeds. If you're working with purely visuals, this can really help you to coast through all of that useless footage to find that two seconds of a usable shot. Or if you're going through an interview, playing at double speed will still let you hear discernible audio of what your subject is saying. This can shave tons of time off of your editing process. And to go along with that, hitting the K key will stop your clip, while the J key will either reduce the speed of your fast playing clips, or if you've already brought it to a stop, it'll start playing your footage in reverse. Number two, drop your playback resolution. Everybody at some point in the video editing process will have experienced lagging playback. Whether you're working with red epic footage or your computer's just a piece of junk, there will be times when your computer just can't keep up. Instead of waiting for your footage to buffer, catch up, or rendering everything out, why not drop your playback quality? It won't affect how your footage looks when you export it, and it'll dramatically help your computer to keep up with what you're asking it to do. Go to this drop-down menu underneath your playback window, and here you can choose a quality reduction that works best for you. Number three, save export settings as a preset. I can't tell you how many times I exported videos by manually selecting each individual parameter. The problem was I wasn't doing anything different for each of these different exports. I was just choosing the same parameters over and over and over again for each export. So what if you could just make one selection instead of 36 different ones each time? Well, you can. When you set up all the parameters for an export that you like and that you think you'll use multiple times, go to the preset dropdown and right beside it you should see an icon with an arrow. This is your save preset button. Click it and choose a name for your preset. Now every time you go to export a video, this preset will be located in the preset dropdown window. One click and you're ready to go. Bonus tip, you can also do this for effects that you add to your footage. Right click and hit select all inside of your effect control window. Or hold control or command and highlight all the different ones that you want to include in the preset. Now right click again and go to save preset. Give it a name and it'll be waiting for you in the preset dropdown folder of your effect window. Number four, adjustment layers. A simple way to save time in the editing process is cutting back on the number of times you need to execute the same task. If you can do something once instead of doing it 20 times over and over again, it'll save you a decent chunk of time. You know what takes up a lot of time? Adding effects to each individual clip. Oh, and the bane of everyone's existence? Color correction. Here's where adjustment layers can save your life. Add an adjustment layer by making sure your project manager is highlighted. Then go to File, New, Adjustment Layer and make sure your sequence settings match. Place it over top of your footage and drag it over top of everything you want to have it applied to. Now make the changes you want to have applied, like a custom black and white color adjustment. Now everything underneath that adjustment layer will have the changes applied to it. And if you don't want something to be included in those changes, like text for example, just drag it above the adjustment layer and it'll be excluded from these changes. And number five, shortcut keys. If used correctly, shortcut keys can add up to being your biggest time saver of all. Why? Because there's so many that can be used in so many different situations. Instead of going over to your toolbar, clicking on an icon, and then bringing your mouse back to where you need it, just hit one button and keep doing what you're doing. Instead of going File, Export, Media, just hit Control or Command M. There's way too many to list them all individually, but let's go over a couple of examples of more commonly used ones that I personally use on a more daily basis. First of all, everything in your toolbar. If you hover over a tool in your toolbar, it'll display the name and its shortcut key. For example, this selection tool is V, cut or blade tool is C, the type tool is T, and one of my favorites is the slip tool, whose shortcut key is Y. The slip tool will let you keep the clip exactly where it is on the timeline, but it'll start to move it either forwards or backwards in time. And another example is the ripple delete. Normally, if you want to delete a clip in the middle of your project, it would leave a gap. And if you wanted to move all your clips over to fill that gap, you'd need to either select everything and move it over, or delete that empty space. But if you hold Alt and then delete your clip, everything will be done in one motion. There's an insane amount of keyboard shortcuts to be able to choose from, but a great way to start is by memorizing everything on your toolbar and then moving on from there. 
You can also see a list of all the keyboard shortcuts by hitting Ctrl or Command, Alt, and K. And from this menu, you can also manually change them to customize what works best for you. Or if you prefer, Adobe has a complete list of all the keyboard shortcuts and what they do. And there's a link for that in the video description below. And guys, that's it. Those are five ways that you can save time working in Premiere Pro. Each of these should be able to make a noticeable difference. But if you use all of them over the course of an entire project, you will be amazed at how much time you're able to save. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.